Hi, I'm Ahura Z. Welcome to Ask the Unicorn. This is my compatriot cohort. Cohort? Cohort. Is that it? <laughs> Partner in crime. <laughs> Partner. Yes, in crime. I'm Charlie Alejandro. Welcome. How are you guys doing? Um, we'll answer your questions tonight. Uh, and um, I want uh, all of the children, if there are any present right now, to um, go ahead and ask your questions so I can... Uh, get them so that they go to bed in a timely fashion. Uh, Charlie just got back from a trip. She remember last week I was all by myself. You were solo. I yes. did, did you miss me? No. <laughs> I was Fine, too... I didn't miss you either. <laughs> well, no, because I was like looking in on you, so I know you're okay. <laughs> yeah, Told so... you I felt like someone was watching me. Yes. <laughs> I'm kind of like Santa Claus. <laughs> I see you when you're awake. I do not want to see people sleeping. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, if we have any questions, without further ado. I have to say, well, the questions haven't queued up yet, but I have to tell you, I was gone for a week and everywhere I went, there was unicorns. And why might that have been? <laughs> I thought it was funny, the hotel we stayed at, literally, <laughs> right, babe? You could see, I just said babe to my husband off screen. Um, there was, you, when you came out, there was this huge, life-size, white unicorn mm -hmm. right in the in the driveway. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> when we pulled up, I even said that to him. I was like, is that what I think it is? And he started yes. laughing. He's like, yeah, that's a unicorn. And babe said? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's a unicorn. <laughs> He's sitting over there shaking his head. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Good, uh, um, good question. How do you look in on people? Well, uh, as a telepath, it allows me to, the, my gift allows me to see people's energy wherever they are. Um, so I call it looking in on them. You know, kind of like just taking a moment, thinking about them, and seeing if I can pick up their energy. And when I can pick up their energy, I just see if they're okay. Is that similar to like a mom that's connected to her kids? And you could say kind of like that, only without the feminine thing. Well, dads do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, more like a big brother that just knows things. Like all of a sudden, I'll go. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Charlie changed that because she thought it was too loud. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. If a person is is going through a particularly stressful time, I should do that with a lot of my students. Um, just kind of look in on them. But you know, as a teacher, you learn things. Mm -hmm. uh, and what you learn is that uh, sometimes you got to trust the student to do what the right thing is. You just have to. And trust them to be able to take care of themselves based upon what it is that you've taught them. I have a question. I know I mentioned parents. Parents do that a lot. And there's more some parents that are more intuitive than others. Are these people that have that ability and never realize it? They just can think it's part of being a parent? Uh, a lot of times, yes. But there is a definite etheric connection between a parent and a child. Mm-hmm. That's definite. That's real. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that uh, uh, one parent thinks that that connection is better with them than the other parent. Mm -hmm. And that's where we kind of have a, a discrepancy. Mm -hmm. Like dads are just as intuitive. Uh, oh, yeah. All throughout uh, time, men have been told that they're not intuitive, they're strong. And women are intuitive, you know. Mm -hmm. But the intuition doesn't choose a gender. Uh, contrary to popular belief, you know, people always say, well, women are intuitive. So are men. Uh, right. Women can be everything that men can be, and men can be everything that women can be. Uh, my teacher always taught me that uh, men and women are equal, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be the truth. Otherwise, people like me wouldn't exist. You know? Yeah, that's true. You know, so uh, when it comes to your, your children, if you develop that, that can actually expand itself. And you can have that equal focus all throughout, not just with your child. Mm -hmm. uh, with your child, your child's friends. And if people actually took that into consideration, there would be a lot less incident with children. And there has been a lot lately that is not very positive. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have enough intuition to look in on your child, you can look in on other children. You know, they always, uh, we always like to say, you know, these wonderful things that sound all positive and fluffy, such as, uh, you know, <laughs> It takes a village to raise a child, <laughs> yeah. you know, and that's been said forever. Mm -hmm. uh, Hillary Clinton didn't make it up. It's been said by people forever, and it's the truth. It does take a village to raise a child, mm -hmm. but the village has to cooperate. That's true. Okay. It takes a village in cooperation with each other 
to raise a child. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't mean to walk around and just because you see someone say hi to a child, that means that they're a bad guy, but at least have enough intuition to say, wait a second, something's not right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, like uh, I, I'm pretty much amazed at the schools nowadays. They, they have such a weak security force. Oh my God, it is. It's I mean, it's just, can walk in there. yeah, exactly. You know, there should be uh, plan people that can come and check on the child and those people should cooperate with each other and go and say is everything all right here mm -hmm. and you know then they should go on about their business and wait for another person to say is everything all right here mm -hmm. you know because you never know right you know so uh it does take a village and uh the village has to cooperate and yes parents do have a wonderful sense of intuition that's awesome you gotta use it though yeah that's true don't just say, oh, I'm so, intuit so, so intuitive, I know when my child is going through something and do nothing. <laughs> yeah, that defeats you know? the purpose. You know, so, yeah. This other question says, I saw on the news tonight about teenage girls doing exorcisms. Apparently they were working with an evangelist, but they went to exorcist school. Is that possible? Doesn't that take years of training? It does take years of training. And uh, that's great. Uh, the teenage, Whenever teenage girls are doing something, everybody... Uh, jumps on this bandwagon and say, oh yes, you know, teenage girls, but you know something? <clears throat> to tell you the truth, it's not a great idea for girls or women to do exorcisms. Why is that? Uh, remember, women are manifestors. Mm. That means that uh, more than anything, and now that's not to say that they can't, don't get me wrong, don't, what do you mean women can't do exorcisms? <laughs> that's not what I said. I said it's not a good idea. Yeah. Because you have to remember, uh, we're built differently. In case you don't know that, uh, someone missed education. Uh, there are certain nuances that allow men to do certain things. There are certain nuances that allow women to do certain things. I don't care how cool you think you are as a guy. You're not going to give birth. <laughs> okay? And I don't see anybody, you know, complaining about that. And if you are, <laughs> seriously. Okay? Well, exorcisms are something that men should do. doesn't mean that they can't have the woman assisting them. But mm -hmm. there must be the male presence there. There has to be. Likewise, if you're dealing with a female demon or a female entity like that, there should always be a woman present somewhere, okay? Mm -hmm. And we know why, <laughs> okay? Just saying, there are certain nuances that must be adhered to, and these teenage girls running around doing exorcism, well, you know, bless your heart. You know, I'm really, you know, glad that you are able to do your exorcism and all that good stuff, but there's something missing there. You're working with an evangelist that's just looking to be famous, and you know something? Exorcism doesn't care about how famous you want to be. Now, my whole thing is, doesn't that, can't that actually have an adverse effect? Well, sure on, can. Remember, uh, on the women, girls doing it? I hate to say this, and, you know, like I said, women have babies. Mm -hmm. um, there's more than one way to give birth. There are certain things that happen, and you have to take into consideration that the whole story of Christ being born to a virgin person the energy of that could very well happen, mm -hmm. but so can the energy of the other guy. Right. <laughs> and uh, uh, this is why you have to be able to see the dragon from two sides. Okay? I think that for that to be allowed is very, very dangerous. That's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that anything is wrong with it. It's just that uh, it's not cool to do exorcisms. It's not fun to do exorcism it's not cute okay you can run around trying to base your life off of an anime and wound up fighting something that you can't handle people like myself have done this for years years and you know something there's no such thing as an easy battle mm -hmm. so you teenagers stay out of the exorcism program learn first then get into it. It's that whole Reiki thing, you know, 13-year-old Reiki master, really? You know, yeah. and, you know, I hate to rant at people like this, but no, I don't think that's cool. And anybody who does think it's cool is a fool. And that evangelist, whoever that is, now it's true. Jesus says that we can cast out demons. We can heal the sick. 
We can make bad things go away. That's fine. Exorcism is something entirely different. And a teenager barely knows themselves. How are they going to know the difference between someone who just ate too many Skittles and a demon? Yeah, very true. Exorcism school. Shame on you people. Mm -hmm. Shame on you. Yeah, because it's definitely something that I believe that people just, either it's for the publicity or they just think that, oh, it's cool, we'll get our name out there, but they don't know what they wind up getting into. No, they don't. And this you know, um, other question, it says, in regards to metaphysics and paranorm paranormality, what are some other things that women should or should not do, things men should or should not do? Um, you know, since I've talked about what women, you know, shouldn't, do alone at least men should not do something else alone a man always needs the other side uh, of energy we're grown we're taught as men and I'm sure you'll attest to this we're taught as men to fight our first reaction is to fight mm -hmm. our very first reaction and our last reaction is to fight the reactions in between is to fight a man should never try to teach another guy. <laughs> okay. I'm serious. Gee, I wonder why that is. You know, because you know what will happen if you like two rams. Bam! Bam! I mean, it's okay to counsel. It's okay to give advice. But you know something? There's a dynamic here that must be adhered to. No man knows what it's like to be a man until they've grown with a woman. And that's just the truth. And you know... I'm sorry all you guys out there think you're all big, bad, and tough and stuff. <laughs> you know, but the truth is, is that, you know, I've taught for many years now. And uh, I became a man when I started teaching women. Because you know what? Women are scary. <laughs> hey! Well, I'm serious. <laughs> women are scary. It doesn't mean that I'm any less masculine because I am the epitome of masculinity. <laughs> I'm only saying there are certain things that should be adhered to. Um, men are suited for child rearing, but not in the way that women are. And uh, if you've ever held a child, if you're a guy for more than five minutes, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. There are certain energy things, and it doesn't mean that women are supposed to raise children. Don't get me wrong in that. I'm merely saying we are not equipped to do certain things. We can't hold on to a baby for like ever. <laughs> I'm serious. My son was saying that. He's like, how we, do these women whip these kids on their hips and run around them like nothing? He's like, you give me the kid for 10 minutes, my arms are falling off. There's a reason for that. It is an <laughs> energy thing. Not only is it an energy thing with children, it's also an energy thing with certain tasks. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that has to do with uh, divinatory, divinatory tasks. Now, you know how women scream? Men scream too, but women scream... <laughs> Blood curling. Anybody ever heard a woman <laughs> scream and get this to totally disrupted? <laughs> yep. Do you know that that voice was actually used at one point in time? And that <laughs> scream was used as a way to disrupt negative energy. Mm -hmm. hmm. Didn't know that, did you? <laughs> yeah. That was used to disrupt negative energy. Now, there are women that are prayer warriors. And you know it's just as effective as exorcism. It really is. And I know some prayer warriors mm -hmm. that are very, very powerful, extremely powerful. And you know what? All people should pray, but prayer warriors should always be women. They provide a cover. It's this null field so that whoever is going through can do what it is that they have to do. That's why you're supposed to work in tandem. You're supposed to see the dragon from both sides. You know, you can do the footwork of the... The grabbing and then fighting this particular entity, but you know what? There should be a woman there that's, that's doing her relationship with the Holy Spirit so that the both of you can work in tandem, so that you both win it. Mm -hmm. Always. There is no one eyed God, and there's no one eyed goddess. So you have to work together. Mm -hmm. So, this whole exorcism school thing, you know, oh, well, there's a group of teenage girls that are doing, oh, isn't that cute? What about all the people that have actually died doing exorcisms? What about all of those people mm -hmm. that have actually really studied what it's like to have a relationship with God so powerful that they can 
take those demons out, that they can make them go away, that they can make the negativity go away. And you're talking about a group of teenage girls. What good for you all, Buffy, Tiffany, and Annie? <laughs> I'm not really interested in any of that. Oh my god, that is so true. Okay? The bottom line is there are people fighting evil every single day. And you want to focus on a bunch of little teenagers who thought it was cool to go to exorcism school? What about the ones that go to vampire school? Hmm? Oh, believe me, there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. We need to get real about some things. Heaven is real. Hell is real. And both of them have their attributes and principles. Now, if we get it together... And, you know, you've got your prayer warrior with you praying while you're doing that exorcism. You get the job done. Mm -hmm. I hate to tell you people this, but Jesus didn't do everything himself. His wife was with him. His name, her name was Mary Magdalene. And those of you that don't like that, oh, my God, he's saying that the Christ was married. And he's a guy. <laughs> you know, so, and they did things. It's my firm belief that they did things together. Even in the Sermon on the Mount, one of them said one thing, the other said the other. Mm -hmm. It does say, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, so I am there. Didn't say one. Mm -hmm. you know, That's so, true. Very true. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. There are different nuances. Both of them are equally as important. But remember, there are certain nuances that should be uh, recognized. You can't be a man if you don't get to know women. And you mm -hmm. can't be a woman if you don't get to know men. You'll be male or female. And, uh, you know, that's pretty lonely. Um, the next question says, what exactly is a prayer warrior? Is it something that can be learned, or mm. is it a natural gift? Some, uh, everyone can learn to pray. Everyone can, and prayer is very effective. Don't let everybody or anybody tell you that prayer is not effective, but you have to do something. A prayer warrior is someone who has a relationship with the Holy Spirit itself. You might call them secretaries of heaven so to speak, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, they have a special relationship with the Holy Father they and the Holy Spirit, and they say only what needs to be said. They do only what needs to be done. You can't force them into conversations. <laughs> they will only say what they want to say. And when it's said, and if something needs to be said, things change. When a prayer warrior prays, things happen every single time that's not to say that all of us can't pray but there's certain people who have the inside track on it kind of like there are mm -hmm. people who want to be singers and people who can sing right there are people who want to be an artist and people who are artists mm -hmm. it's like that there are some people uh like uh let's take uh your husband mm -hmm. <laughs> He's a natural cop. His temperament is that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a natural policeman. My temperament is that way. Right. And Charlie, even though she'll deny it, is a natural <laughs> policeman too. Now, there are people yeah. who want to be cops for whatever reason they want to. And they try very, very diligently. And they can be very successful. But there's a difference between something that is natural and mm -hmm. real and there and something that has been studied for and you know learned they're effective but at some point in time all of that energy has to change even a natural ability must be trained right but training at some point in time if it's right can seem as a natural ability and for all i know uh or anyone else knows it could turn into a natural ability remember natural merely means the all of nature mm -hmm. or the common state of nature you know so uh, a prayer warrior is someone who has a special relationship with the Holy Spirit so that when they pray, it is the very power of the Holy Spirit that comes through. So when you're a prayer warrior, whether it's a gift or something you developed, is there a certain lifestyle you have to lead or yes, certain there things is that need to be done? Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, a prayer warrior has to have everything themselves. They have, they have to have total autonomy. In other words, they have to have their own ut eating utensils, their own... Uh, area, their own chair, their own everything, so that nobody else touches it, mm -hmm. okay? And they usually take care of those things. And why is that? Well, because they don't need anybody else's vibration on it. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. You all have to excuse Charlie. She has a bit of a cold. <laughs> a little bit of a cold. And, uh, you know, she's working on it. Yeah, so 
in order to that, so you're talking about that all right now what if someone wants to develop it maybe not to do it you know for other people but for themselves or their family or whatever is that something that they would have to do or they well, have to create to an isolation or is that because i know we pray every day and we have faith or a relationship with god there's power in those prayers i'm talking no, to bring it to the next level um no uh <clears throat> you can learn it you can learn but you will always notice a prayer warrior. A prayer warrior is kind of like this wind that just passes by you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, whoosh, and you go, I didn't even see that person. You know? Yeah. It's like a prayer warrior is <laughs> like. We've had that happen. You know, a prayer warrior is like a, a almost like a ninja. <laughs> you know? But you can learn mm-hmm. to develop that power. Remember, God invests in those that invest in themselves. So if you want to invest your your life in being a prayer warrior, what what is God going to tell you? No, <laughs> no, you can't pray seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, of course you can develop that, but there are people who are specifically prayer warriors. That that's um, funny you, you mentioned that. Go to them. My husband and I actually had that conversation. Your prayer warrior was in the room, and then we talked about it on the way home. He's like. What do you mean there was someone else in the room? Like, yeah, didn't see her, did you? Yeah, no, he, he, it was funny. And then he's, you could tell he's like rewinding. He's like, no, nah, there wasn't anybody. I was like, you know the chorus? Yeah, she was right there. But you're right, it is. It's always that. I remember the first time I met her. It is. It's like, it was almost like a change in the episode. It, you can't in the very it. air. Yeah, it was. it's very different. You can tell. And, you know, you'll notice that. Then now there are other countries that have known about prayer warriors forever. Oh, yeah. And for me, it was ironic because I didn't know she was a prayer warrior, but I just noticed there was a shift in the energy. There was something different. And I attributed to, well, this is the kind of person that as quiet as they are, they just bring a certain command presence to the room. It's it's different. And that presence is a Holy Spirit and should and always be respected. Let me help you all out. I'm going to give you a, a very good lesson, okay? When it comes to the Holy Spirit, you can do any 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 other thing but maintain a healthy respect for the holy spirit Mm -hmm. you must maintain a healthy respect for the holy spirit we are all flawed all of us are however the holy spirit is not so if i can help you in that way so that you when you're regarding the holy spirit try not to joke about it. You will never, ever hear me joke about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Ever. It is one of the greatest taboos that I can even think of. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can hold that particular regard, your life will go better. Mm -hmm. But a prayer warrior is a a special being. We're all special. But that prayer warrior has a certain relationship with the Holy Spirit. And uh, it will take me a long time to actually explain all of it. Mm -hmm. But that should help. Um, the other question here is, you call yourself a psychic policeman. No, I don't call myself a psychic <laughs> policeman. I am a psychic policeman. The screen just went black. <laughs> okay. Okay, you're a psychic policeman. Can any paranormal investigator learn to be a psychic police person? Um, how does one know if they have the... Predile- what predilection. It? Thank you. <laughs> uh, when one has, exactly, a predilection for peace and a predilection for order and a predilection for removing negativity. Mm -hmm. You know that inside yourself. And yes, people can learn to be a psychic policeman. Uh, You can learn to do investigation correctly. Remember, as a paranormal investigator, you must remember this one thing. Paranormal means normal and beyond. You can't forget that, okay? It means normal and beyond. Mm -hmm. Now, as a psychic policeman, I have the ability to police the psychic world. In other words, if someone were to to place a curse on someone else, not only would I remove the curse, I can shut the person down that placed the curse and make it so they can't harm anybody else. I call it unplugging them. Mm -hmm. If someone has been cursed, I can remove the curse, and then I give them ways to stay out of trouble. If someone has been a psychic criminal, is what we call them. Mm -hmm. Not only do I stop them, but I give them clear-cut rules as to what they should not do. Excuse me. And if they do it again, I will unplug them. For instance, I will tell them this. Listen, you're clean now. 
Don't be caught doing this, 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 or this, or this. Don't go here. Don't do this. Stay doing this, 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 and this. It's really no different from being a land policeman. You know, if someone, if I just drag someone out of hell, their life is okay, I give them clear-cut rules. Mm -hmm. And I say, look, you know, you can stay out of hell if you just do this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. Don't do this, 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 or this, because if you do, you'll land back in. And I do not like going to get someone a second time. I don't even like going to get someone the first time. It's like when people say, you know, astral travel this and astral travel this. Shut up, okay? Because <laughs> I have had to go into the astral realm to save someone's butt, and I was not happy about it. Mm -hmm. If I have to go into the astral realm, that means I leave even the tiniest trace of a signature. Okay? And I have to take great pains to make sure that I am not leaving a signature behind that can be traced back. So, no, I'm not pleased about it, and nor should you be. All you people say, oh, it's so great. I've been into the astral travel and I smoked marijuana. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seriously. You I'm know? Sorry, it's just the way you said it. It's so true because I've actually heard people say that and I'm yeah. like, it just, it's funny because they have no clue. It's like having a, a $9 an hour security guard, which is different from a security officer who's highly trained, which is different from a police officer, mm -hmm. which is different from a state trooper, which is different from, exactly. you know, whatever next level you go to, and them trying to talk like, oh, I know what it is. No, you don't. You went to school for two days, they gave you a whistle, and they made you a security guard. Mm -hmm. You're not going to compare yourself to a security officer or a police officer or a state trooper. Or someone who's been extensively trained. Exactly. You, you it's just, so different. You know, it is very, very different. Being a psychic policeman means that that was something that I was born with. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm a cleric. In other words, I work for God, literally. Okay? Literally. And you know something? If God tells me to do it, I do it. If God tells me not to do it, I don't do it. If God says, I don't think that's a good idea, I said, I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? However. Now, let me ask you a question. In today's society, why do you think people have such a stigma when you say something like, I'm a cleric? And they, because people think that if you work for God, you're either a priest or a bishop or a nun or along or a monk along those lines why is it that people can't see average everyday people being a cleric and working for god in other ways well because they believe that anything that has to do with god has to come from a religious base or structure mm -hmm. and that's not true that's the, that's like the furthest from the truth you could come that's like saying you have to be qualified to turn on a light mm -hmm. you know or you have to go to this church in order to know that that is light but there are people like myself that are born with something and no one no one, absolutely no one, can take that away from me. So you consider being a cleric just another gift that can be given to you, like being able to have an extraordinary singing voice or mm -hmm. being an incredible artist? Yeah, I, I got Along those lines, but obviously at a higher plane? Well, like I said, natural talent is one thing. Right. Okay, natural ability is another thing. Mm -hmm. I still have to be disciplined. Okay. But and that's I, something that you are born with, like a natural ability that I, like I said, okay, you have natural talent and like an athlete, you can be naturally talented, yes. but you work on it to bring you to the next level. Exactly. And so you make people it higher are actually born with this ability to be a cleric and then it's up to them to develop it to the next it's level. It's up to them to okay. develop it. It's always yeah. a choice. Listen, everybody has a gift. Uh, at least one, at least one. There's no human being on the face of this earth that does not have at least one gift. Mm -hmm. And anybody who believes that they don't have a gift you're not looking you're not looking listen we're all children of a higher consciousness that's the key phrase higher consciousness and if we're all children of a higher consciousness and higher life that means we have part of that higher consciousness within us the fact that you can learn anything proves that evolution is real mm -hmm. the fact that you can look and we can all look and see the same thing means that there's a common power that is running all of us right the fact that we can talk about something and relate a message or a lesson from one person to another proves that we all have the ability to learn and process. Mm -hmm. Okay, Science likes to say, we only use 10% of our brains. How do you know? You don't know. Shut up. <laughs> you know, but, you know, because we actually have to use all of our brains in order to operate. We may not use certain pathways to their fullest extent, mm -hmm. but they are operating. Now, if you want to do something like be a cleric, Learn what a cleric is, but not just what a cleric is. Learn what a cleric isn't. 
okay? And understand that I am a God cleric, which basically means that I work for God, and I do what God tells me to do, not what a church tells me to do. Mm -hmm. Because nine times out of nine, that church is hiding something. God is not exclusive. Remember that. And neither is anything else. That, if you want to learn to develop your intuition to a, a state that it becomes psychism and then develop that psychism to a state that it becomes telepathy, you can do that. It will take work, but you can do it. So but, is everybody born with the ability to be either a cleric or a psychic or an intuitive? They just haven't developed it? No. Or is that like everything else? Some people can sing, some people can right. dance. Some not everybody cleric. is born with that. Now, let me ask I, you a question. I, okay, hold on. Um, my in my particular thing i get born with a lot mm -hmm. a lot of things that didn't make me super great mm -hmm. what it did was make me born with a lot of things which mm -hmm. basically meant that i had to spin more plates than other people mm -hmm. okay and let me tell you something that's hard it oh, yeah. really is hard yeah. um so uh it's not that i said oh please make me a raving telepaths that can do anything <laughs> yeah you know and then people will notice me and love me and i will be rich and famous and all of that good stuff you know what i wanted to do i wanted to eat the next day <laughs> you know, <so> I, <laughs> yeah seriously yeah that's all i really wanted you know i wanted people to just look at me and, and let me play <laughs> you know with them mm -hmm. but uh unfortunately when you're born with a gift there comes a responsibility there's some truth to the saying where more is given more is required yeah definitely and uh you can spend the rest of your life trying to find out what required is. Mm -hmm. So so before you think that something is really cool, take into consideration everything that goes into doing that. I've had to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with fire demons. I've had to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with people who thought they were possessed that were just obsessed. I've had to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with people who were possessed. It wasn't fun. It wasn't cool. I'm standing here looking at something that even the horror movies can't even depict trying to stand my ground while my legs are shaking uncontrollably, but I was standing my ground. I have had to look at people whose lives were wasted because they were cursed. And I could see it, but other people thought that they were perfectly normal. Mm. I have had to stand in darkness. And I don't mean like you turn the lights off and show that stupid green light that those paranormal <laughs> shows show. I mean real darkness. And I've had to fight it out of myself. I've had to look at the mirror and look at myself with all of my talent and be lost. It's not that fun. Mm -hmm. However, when I finally do win, because I know I'm going to, eventually, I get to see everything beautiful that people have talked about and more. I've gotten to see what the pathway to heaven looks like. I've gotten to see what you would all call heaven itself. I've also seen hell. It ain't pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay? And heaven is undescribable. You know, so uh, I've seen people at their best. I've seen people at their worst. I've been at my best and at my worst. You know, because you can't see something without being something. Right. You know? Now, with that point, right, one of the things I wanted to know is if, like, all right, talk about singing. You know if you can sing or not. I mean, you're going to know. If... <laughs> Some people don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the people around them will know. Like, the, you know, okay, the, it's true. Everybody can learn how to sing and mm -hmm. everybody can learn how to harmonize. I'm one of those. I can harmonize like anybody's business. You would never have me do a solo because it's not going to happen. Now, Zanari <laughs> can do a solo. Yeah, but don't tell me that. Yeah, well, yeah, I know because you can train them. But my thing is, okay, you, you're born with, let's say, I have the ability to sing. Mm -hmm. I know it. My parents can hear me, even if they love me, they're like, oh, she can sing, or, or work on it, or she's all right, let's see what we can do. How does a person find out when we're talking about something so different, so out of the realm of the quote-unquote normal that people would look for kids to have as a gift when it comes to being a psychic or an empath or a cleric? Listen to what the child has to say. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. You have to, if you're the person, you have to find a way to relate what you're seeing in a way that the other person can understand. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay? Like, it does no good to tell someone there's snow on the mountain. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> the wings are flapping next to the stone. And, you know, that, that doesn't do any good. You know, you tell that person, you yeah. say, look, you know, you're a little older now. You can't go running around like you thought you could before. Mm -hmm. Okay? You know, you don't bound out of bed anymore. You kind of roll. And, you know, and <laughs> yeah. It's the, Talk and roll, baby. You know, so, you know, you have to say something. And... When the child is coming telling you, you know, I saw this, 
don't just look at the child and discount it because you're scared which is what a lot of parents do. Well, that's a great example because I have a grandson that does that all the time and it freaks his dad out. His dad more than his mom. His mom's like, yeah, whatever. But, I mean, this child, since he was seven, eight months, I remember in the first apartment they lived at, he would crawl over to this mm-hmm. closet, like a utility closet, and he would sit there for hours talking to someone in the closet. And then now that they live in a different place, he's, what, almost four years old, I've taken his picture numerous times, and he's like, oh, can he be in the picture? And I'm like, and my son would be like, cut that crap out, because, yeah. you know, that's, it, that's you know his something? reaction to it. He's like, he he doesn't want to deal with that. But that's how you find out where that child is extraordinary. Mm-hmm. And at that point in time, it's no longer about what you want. It's about what that child is going through. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, you, granted, you know, children have a habit of reassociating. Mm-hmm. But if the child is looking and say, hey, that person's here again. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can't figure out what it is. You don't just get freaked out and go, stop it. Stop it. Stop. <laughs> you know you know what you do? That sounds like You say, thing, yeah. okay, can you tell me about this person? Mm-hmm. Uh, can, can you see him? Does he talk to you? Can you? You have to find out everything. Because remember, as a cleric, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, and as a psychic policeman, I want to know everything. I want to know everything in case mm-hmm. that child's life is in danger. I need right. to head it off at the pass. You know? And you say, well, this particular person, show me exactly where they are. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then you know something that's wonderful that we never use? It's called uh, etheric contact association. And what that is, is just mm-hmm. like a contact high that you got in high school. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Just because that person's passion is so strong and you're with that person, remember, etherically, we are all connected. Right. You may not see what that person sees, but you will know that it's there. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. and when you know that it's there, you can do one of two things: do like they do in the movies, go, <laughs> you know, or you can say, "Okay, fine." So I know you're here. I got no qualm with you, and neither mm-hmm. does he. Mm-hmm. So long as you're not endangering any of us, are we clear? Right. Okay, and then what you do is you. Find ways to test that child's intuition. You have to. You have mm-hmm. to find ways. You know, if you have a child that gets up and picks up a guitar and can hold it right for some unknown reason, right. but plays a bunch of... <laughs> that child may have talent. You don't snatch it and say, quit making that noise. You go, how do you know how to hold that? Right. You know? Or you have one that is just natural when they, they say something or they sing or they look. I met this child... Mm-hmm. And it was in on Halloween, and I, you know, for all intents and purposes, I could have swore that child was a reincarnation of Gandhi. Oh my goodness, that's <laughs> you know? funny. And you know, he was a, and he came up, and he had his bag. He didn't say a word. He just smiled. Mm-hmm. He looked at looked at us and looked at me, and I, I looked at him, and I <coughs> said, "Aren't you interested?" And mm-hmm. I gave him candy, and you know, he blinked and nodded. Didn't say a word, but <laughs> it was the most it was the most loving look you ever saw in this child. I said, I think I just met someone, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. And he did that all the way line, all the way down our line of handing out candy. <coughs> Bless you, all the way down our line of handing out candy. That's funny. And I said, you know, that child had the same feeling as Jesus and Gandhi. But you know, it's funny because I've met children like that, not to that extreme, but there's just something about them that's like a, I don't know, older wisdom kind of thing. I know people say, oh, they're an old soul, but it's beyond that. You know, it's not an older wisdom. People like to say things like that. You know what it is? It's a very young temperament. They've been born with something that will be developed. Mm -hmm. And inside them, they can see when other people have it. And I think that he was reaching out and speaking because he expected me to know, which I did. Right. And, uh, you know... It was the same story. I expected other people to know. I thought everyone thought like I did. And you find out very quickly what you know. So when you do meet up with someone who you look at, and they look at you in the same look, and you know each other, it's like, (gasps) wow, I can actually be myself. Right. You know, so remember something. For those of you that have very intuitive children, you've got an extraordinary child. That means you have to be extraordinary. You have to be an extraordinary parent, period. There is no other choice. There is no other decision. You have to be extraordinary. The child is extraordinary. You be extraordinary. Now, let me ask you a question. Can there be any detriment to the child if you just ignore that particular talent that they have? Oh, of course. It could turn bad. Could you imagine me evil? Oh, Lord. No. (laughs) That's scary. 
That is scary, even to myself. So you suggest that if you do have a child like that, just ask them questions, find out what more information mm -hmm. so you can see what... what so you can see from. what they're seeing. And make but don't be condescending about it. about it, you know, like, do you see the purple fairy? <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, my grandson would check me real quick. He's like, JJ, don't be silly. It's not yeah. a purple fairy, yeah. it's a lady. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, nonchalant. So ask for reals. You know, you talk to... You know, people talk to kids like they're... They don't talk to kids like they're kids. They talk to them like they're stupid. You know? It's like... <laughs> Oh, uh, and so some of them, true. some of them, you can't really like help it, but others, it's like you're talking to this child, and he says, "Yeah, I saw this the other day," and so forth. And I speak to them like I would an adult, mm -hmm. and I tell them exactly what it is. And I learned that lesson very, very early because I don't like being talked to like I was doing. Oh, you saw the little pink elephant on the table, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh man, if I was an adult, I'd stomp you in your head." <laughs> you know, <laughs> serious. You know, so I don't do that to children. You know, there's some of them, when they're babies, they're not finished yet, so, you know, they make funny noise, and I make funny noise back at them, and then I realize a spell has been worked on me, and I snap out of it, mm -hmm. you know? Like, this is one cute little girl named Lexi that... Oh, she's such a doll. Oh, my God. She, like, <laughs> made me give her soda one day, and I'm like, wait, I'm the telepath here. She's like, do it. <laughs> <laughs> And her mom came and said, did you give her a soda? I said, no. no. <laughs> Lying. <No. But, laughs> you know, she said, I knew I should have left her with you. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do, you know? She's she got like that magic it. power, yeah, you know? But uh do it. But, uh, so you, you think it's, so as a parent or for parents out there, if that's the case, it's, it's a matter of this is a good thing to do to encourage the child to talk or otherwise... Otherwise, I know. Shut down. Yeah, that's kind of like what happened to me. I had some experiences growing up where, after the second or third time of being told I was delusional and was going to get taken to a doctor, you kind of say, "Okay, I'm. This isn't real. It's something that I'm yeah. imagining." And, and that's just that's tune it out. that's just sad. Because you know what? At a certain age, do you even did you even know what delusional was? It's like, what's that? <laughs> you know. <laughs> And, you know, after getting told, I'm going to take you to see a psychiatrist, well, I'm smarter than the psychiatrist, so that wouldn't have been a good idea. No, in my you case, know? it was more like, the men in the white coats are going to come get yeah. you. <laughs> You're never going to go home again. I'm like, oh. And, you know, that's so unfortunate mm -hmm. when that happens, because that not only shatters the person's ability to communicate what it is they're saying, it stops them from doing anything else. Remember, it takes intuition to play an instrument. Mm -hmm. It play, takes intuition to do something simple, even to keep a job, to walk down the street at the right time or avoid a situation. All of that is intuitive. It all is, what do, what do we like to call it, you know, because we're kind of dumb. It's a gut feeling. It's not a gut feeling. You're using your mind. You're using your heart. You're using those things that were given to you to use. And, you know, just because someone else doesn't want to be extraordinary about it, it doesn't mean you don't have to. Now, if you know, a child shuts that down because they weren't encouraged or they were, you know, basically told they were crazy for seeing it, can it have physical manifestations it later can on indeed. in life, it can like cause illnesses sicknesses, and stuff? Yes. Yes, Why definitely. is that? Because the energy has to flow. Energy always has to flow. If energy doesn't flow, it builds up in one place. Mm -hmm. And when it builds up in one place, it mutates. And more times than not, it is a negative mutation. And remember, all things are energy. They always start. Even disease was energy, which brings about the point that you can also cure a disease by taking the energy away from it. And mm -hmm. you figured that science would figure that out by now, but <laughs> I guess not. But, yeah. you know, uh, remember, if energy doesn't flow, then it builds. And at some point in time, it causes an aberration. That aberration could do nothing but destroy because creativity at that point is being destroyed. Therefore, it knows nothing but destruction. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can find a way to train a disease, you can cure it. You know, and it's funny that people have a hard time believing that because if there was another thing, like I'll give you an example. I have a son of mine who loves baseball. He hasn't played it in a while. He tuned it out, pretended it didn't bother him that he wasn't playing. Mm -hmm. And it manifested itself in like an apathy and kind of not like a depression, but just like being bummed out altogether because he wasn't doing what he was passionate about. Now, we I humans see. understand that part of it when we don't do the things we love that way. But why is it that we have such a hard time understanding that that can happen with metaphysical things as well? Well, because of the word, <clears throat> um, the term. So remember, anything metaphysical was termed as taboo and mm -hmm. bad. Even though it wasn't, uh, you know, I take one of the greatest fallacies that there are, and that's 
there is, and that's the uh, Catholic Church. They said that all of these things were so evil and so bad. You know, magic is evil and bad, and this and that. But they always use uh, mystical rituals to do Which even their funny services. Because exactly, everything, if you look at it, I mean, realistically, if you had some alien come out from another world and doesn't know any of this, and you do look at most religious ceremonies, they would look like some archaic, mm -hmm. you know, occult kind of ceremony going on that would be perceived evil, when in reality it's not. Everything has symbolism. I mean, even Everything to the point does. that we wear a wedding ring or mm -hmm. we have a lucky piece of jewelry. God forbid it's... we don't have our lucky <laughs> shoes on when we go to the casino or whatever. He believes in luck. Yeah. It's got to be evil. <laughs> you know, just if you say anything that has to do with non-conventionality, a lot of times you're pressed into this corner. Mm -hmm. And I say this a lot, but when it stops happening, I'll probably stop saying it. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember something. To be human, which is God-man, literally, that's mm -hmm. what it means. To be human means to be free. And to be free means to express. To express means to feel, have joy, and think. And if any of those are suppressed, then you're suffering. It's sickness. Mm -hmm. You have to remember that. We are built to grow. We are supposed to grow. We're supposed to grow in the way that we choose to grow. If we choose to focus our energy in a direction, we are supposed to be able to evolve in that direction. Mm -hmm. You know, but we've been taught not to let go of something or told them something that's totally irrelevant or to make some sure that something doesn't happen. For instance, uh, there are a lot of people that don't have the, the guts to do something like what we're doing right now, oh, yeah. which mm -hmm. is talking outright and free. However, they'll sit and say when they're like 100 years old, well, you know, I, I could have been an internet TV host and, yeah, I could have been a contender. you know, stuff. <laughs> and, yep. You know, I, I just, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but the truth is we all have the chance to be anything we choose to be. Exactly. A person like myself just tries to do all of that, mm -hmm. you know, to do what it is that I see. Unfortunately, I can't be in a thousand places at once physically. It'd be great if I could, man. Mm -hmm. A whole army of me. We probably got on each other's nerves, but still, <laughs> it would be kind of fun. You'd be fist fighting yourself. Yeah, I'd be like, stop fighting yourself. <laughs> when you hit one of them, stop hitting yourself. Just, you know. Right. But. Uh, this is a good question. What is taking place when you dream of a person telling you something and it really takes place? This is kind of funny that question comes up because that actually mm, happened to me a while ago. That's called precognition. It's mm -hmm. a, a, a juxtaposition of dimensional events okay what does juxtaposition mean z mm -hmm. juxtaposition means when there's an event that is taking place over the that overlays another uh event that almost happens at the same time so mm -hmm. it's more like an overlay and a conjunction hence the term juxtaposition you know it's something that actually crosses at the same time as um melts so what happened is you had a dream about this particular thing and then that person came up and said the exact same thing uh now chances are you may have thought oh wow that was really you know interesting that you said that because i had a dream about this well <clears throat> maybe energy was trying to reach you and chose a vessel that could do that and the thing that they did was they chose a dream and said okay we're going to coordinate this person because they're not listening mm -hmm. okay so in your dream you hear you should really put that down and then someone comes up and says, you know, you should really put that down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're about to, you know, have that one more gigantic double cheeseburger when you shouldn't. <laughs> and you know you shouldn't. And that person says, oh, you should really put that down. Now, eight times out of ten, a person get offended. Don't tell me what to do. But the other person will say, wait a second, I had a dream about this. Mm -hmm. And then it will compel you to put it down. Now, is that the same thing as, like, let's say you have a, someone that's already passed come in a dream and tell you something, and then it comes in reality? Is that the same thing? The person who passed comes in reality? <laughs> no, I know. I know what you, you mean. know what I mean. No, uh, <laughs> I mean, if someone that, it's like, let's say my dead mother comes and says to me, don't walk down that street, and then I'm awake, and there's a huge accident because I didn't walk down that street, and I wasn't in it. That's called uh, precognition. So it's, is it kind of the same thing? It doesn't same matter thing. whether the person is dead or alive? It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, that person is representing a certain energy that's trying to either reach you or to 
to reach you so that something happens or so that it doesn't happen or so you can clear it. Hmm. Here's another one about dreams. I'm going to spell it out because I don't want to butcher the way you pronounce it. A-N-H-K. Ankh. Ankh. Thank you. What, what does an Ankh represent in a dream? Life. Life force. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Ankh represents what the Ankh means in all throughout. And that means life and life force. Okay. Uh, it depends on what you're looking for. The question you want to ask uh, or you actually w probably have a story that went with this because the Ankh would show up in an event. Okay, so you want to think about the event and how the Ankh showed up. Okay. But it does mean life and life force. Now, I have another question pertaining to dreams. Um, oh, here's another one before I ask you yours. I've heard you do not accept gifts from people. Why is that? Because I don't want to be indebted to anyone. And uh, there's a universal principle that says for everything that is given, something must be given. Or everything that is gotten, something must be given. Well, does it have to be a physical manifestation? Like, yes. Let's say, for yes. example, because I give you a pair of shoes and then you give me counsel. Isn't that a fair exchange? Uh, yeah, that's a fair exchange. But there has to be something given. In other words, I will find, because I am a super ninja, I will find <laughs> a way to give you something physical. Okay? Without being offensive. Now, how about in this society where some people just because they love people or they care about them, they want to give them something? You mean like family? Or, you know, well, family is whoever you choose to okay, make your family. True. Well, in that particular case, then you should be equally as willing to receive something from them. Now, my question with that, which is real interesting, what if someone happens to give you something very expensive? Does it have to be of equal value? No, it does not. So, it, for example... As long as it takes place on the physical level. Okay. So... It, Someone can give you a brand new car, and then you can make them a bracelet, and it's in a fair exchange. Yes. Okay. We got Scooby <laughs> for five of my albums. That is freaking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And I just slipped it right to her. Hey, you should listen to these. You'll like them. <laughs> but see, like I said, I'm a ninja. You know, I'm not going to tell you where I'm coming from. So I think like, that's really cool, because I love doing that. Yeah. But see, how about these people that like to give gifts anonymously? Like, they just likes to help people, but they don't want people to know who it gave it to them. I understand that. Um, and you're talking about people who are humanitarians. And uh, I think that's a beautiful thing that they're doing. But it would be so much more enjoyable if you just didn't do it anonymously and you told people who you were so they can give you something back. Do you think there's a detriment to that other person that receives the gift and Maybe. doesn't know who to give it back to? Maybe, because the universe will find a way. The universe, if you don't choose to give something back or to take something, then the universe itself will decide. And it's far better for you, too. The universe has a very, I don't want to say bad, but messed up sense of humor. <laughs> oh, we know that. Okay. Uh, babe. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Messed up sense of humor. How about if, how, now where does the theory of pay it forward come in that? Like, if I give someone A movie? <laughs> come on now. No. I give you something, but you don't know it came from me. And that's, okay, we'll give you an example. We were in Florida. Okay. And the people in front of us paid our toll. Oh. So I wasn't able to return the favor to them, and I return it to someone else. I pay the toll for someone else, let's say. Well, you know, and that, so on and so forth. In that particular is that case? Um, I think that it's a really cool thought. I do, but the universal principle outranks coolness. So, so I can't you find. Can, yeah, I know. <laughs> I what can't find can them. Do. So who do I? What can That's I okay. do? That's <laughs> okay. That's okay. That's uh, okay. What you do uh, is uh, you have to think like a ninja. Mm -hmm. Seriously, you know, someone says, "Oh, you know, we'll pay your toll for you." You know what you do mm -hmm. is you take out the money that you're going to pay for your toll and you lay it right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. That means that you've given back. Mm -hmm. That person at that point in time has the opportunity to either take it or not take it. But what if it was it. like they paid it and they drove off and you didn't get to see them? All right, me, I threw a rock at them. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wow! If you, if you, you mean they, you didn't know who it was? You no, didn't get to see no. Them? We drove and you know off and then yeah. the toll yeah. lady said, oh, the people in front of you paid your toll. And by that time, and there you know was three or four cars in front you of us. You know what so. you do? You say, thank you very much for that, but I like paying my own. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because that... You don't know who they were. Do you think that, seriously, that other people don't know what I know? So you don't think... <laughs> no, I know what I'm saying, so there really is... There's no, like, benevolence to that? That's actually a bad thing? They may have been benevolent, but they may have been sneaky. Mm-hmm. It depends on how the rest of your day went. 
Oh my, it was pretty good, I have to. Okay. Then they may have been benevolent. Okay. It's kind of like the trick of a four-leaf clover. You know mm -hmm. people are, you know, I found a four-leaf clover. Why do you want to need luck for? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I, I see a four-leaf clover, I admire it, I look at it, and I back away slowly. Mm-hmm. You really have to think. Like, if you gave me something, you say, no, it's because I love you, I care, and all this good stuff. And I go, well, thank you very much. Hey, I just made these. Have one. See, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, that's how you do it. You don't have to say, no, I have to give you something or I can't accept it. Now, the way that I used to be is that's exactly what I would do. Right. I would tell them, no, I'm not taking this if you're not going to take something in return. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's rude. Yes. But you can do this. You say, hey, I just made this. Mm -hmm. Have that. Yeah, you know, I like that because I know two years ago I cleaned out a whole room in my house and dumped the crap on you. <laughs> but this was all stuff that was useful to you, but I got a lot out of it back. And what did I give you? A lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I gave you stuff. I also gave you uh, bread. We mm -hmm. fed you. Oh, yeah. Make sure. Mm, yummy. <laughs> See? And what did I say about it? See, I like that because that I like the fact that you don't have to stress about the value. Like, I could, mm. you could give me something really valuable and I can give you a cookie and it cancels yeah. out. I like that. I've had people, uh, I've had to bail, you know, kids. They were kids and they were stupid. Uh, I had to bail one out of jail and I uh, asked, uh, he says, I don't know how I'll repay you. And I said, well, what do you have in your pocket? Mm -hmm. So I have 12 cents. There you go. That's fine. That's awesome. I really like that. Yeah, that but that's if everybody had that kind of mentality, mentality we would have no be problems. Very you know? true. But we are actually out of time. Well, that's okay. I want to go a little further. Awesome. Um, and what I want to do is address some things. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I have to address is that you should all uh, pay attention to the things that are happening around us. There have been many, many sightings uh, of uh, what they like to call alien sightings, but I believe these people were here before us. Mm -hmm. um, there have been many mm -hmm. events that have happened where people have seen double images. You're going to see more and more of that towards the end of the year. Don't be alarmed. Doesn't mean that, excuse me, the world is coming to an end. Mm -hmm. it mainly means that we're passing through a dimensional uh, curtain, and we'll go to the other side of that dimensional curtain. Everything will return to normal. What you can do is use that extra energy in order to help yourself evolve and grow. Okay. And uh, now I do need to say that I have to talk to all of my homies and say uh, those of you that have school tomorrow, you should be in bed. Um, there's Kenzie say, yeah, John and said, Kenzie say hi, hi John, love Kenzie, you too. love you too, love you, Z. <laughs> and uh, all of the Browns, all of the Rosberas, all of the people, all of the Bradines, all of the, the um, Holdrens, mm -hmm. all of the uh, well, Laura Holdren because she's kind of like into the altar herself, and then the, <laughs> the, all of my other students. Uh, thank you all for attending tonight, and uh, Ask the Unicorn is going to change here and there. It would be a wonderful show, and I'm, we're also going to do some other programming. Uh, what I would like for you all to do is spread the word about the movie that we're doing right now. We're just finishing up um, Project I, Navi, but we're working on Falcare. We've begun pre-production. Thank you all for helping us out with that. And uh, hopefully, uh, you will. those of you that have made pledges, please, we can really use it. Um, and uh, look at some of the poster, the poster that we have that was just finished. You'll all love it. Mm, it is okay. awesome. Um, Absolutely awesome. You know, so uh, please do that and uh, have a wonderful week. I'm Ahura Z. I'm Charlie Alejandro. And over there being very, very quiet <laughs> is Mr. Alejandro. <laughs> My partner in crime. <laughs> yes. Wait. That's but, your husband. I'm your partner in crime. That's true. Yeah. Very true. You're my partner in crime. That's okay. my hubby. Yeah, I stand corrected. Say stuff like that. He's a police. We man. get into so much trouble together. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. You all have a wonderful night, and I'll see you all next week. No, Bye. Have a good week.